Tell us what you're reading right now. I am reading a wonderful book called The Prize Fighter and the Playwright, and it's about the the wonderful friendship between um, the heavyweight Gene Tunney from the 1920s and George Bernard Shaw, the, the playwright. And it's also about what books meant to Tunney. Um, he read as a way of relaxing before some of his epic battles, and um, and he even went on to lecture at Yale. So it's just it, it's um, an intriguing, odd look at this one bookworm heavyweight um, who is now officially my favorite heavyweight fighter. Let's see what else is on my nightstand. I'm almost finished with this um, just beautiful novel by Kent Hariff, um from Kanaf, which is coming in the spring called Benediction. It's very, very powerful. I read The Three Investigators as a kid, this long forgotten series by Alfred Hitchcock. It was sort of uh, the poor man's Hardy Boys. And these kids lived in a junkyard in a trailer that they converted to an office and they solved mysteries. And I, uh, when I did something good in school or when I behaved myself, I was taken to Hunter's Bookstore on Plainome Road in Manhasset, New York, and I was allowed to buy another uh, copy another from the series of the three investigators. I remember how they looked and how they smelled and not being able to wait to get my hands on the next and all my friends were reading them. And then it seems like um, the next love of my reading life as a, as a teenager was Hemingway. I just fell completely head over heels in love and read everything I could get my hands on and didn't understand half of it. Um, and that led me kind of organically naturally to Fitzgerald and, and they've always been um, kind of uh, my, my lodestars, my heroes. Um, the, the, the three giants from the 30s, Hemingway, Fitzgerald, and Faulkner, are, are the writers I return to again and again and again. I think Sun Also Rises was definitely life-changing, um, and so was The Great Gatsby, because it's sort of set in the area of Long Island where I grew up, and, and yet it's a completely different world from the one that I knew growing up. And the language uh, is just, um, it's, it's magic. And um, it, there's, there is no limit to the number of times that you can reread it and have your breath taken away. I don't want to make a transition from journalist to author because I love journalism and have always wanted to be a journalist. And, and um, I think it's one of the most exciting and rewarding and noblest professions. I hope it's always a part of my life. So it's not anything that I ever saw as a transition. I just, I see writing and storytelling as all of a piece. And if you're lucky enough to be able to do it in nonfiction and fiction, journalism and books, then, um, then go for it. Um, but it's not, I don't see it as uh, stepping stones or um, there's no hierarchy. I, I see it as all one, you know, uh, beautiful way to make a living if, you're, if you can. It was late 2008, 2009, I was working on a different novel and suddenly the world started spinning backwards and imploding and the global financial meltdown was underway. Um, and I was just growing angrier and angrier by the day. Um, I remember one day vividly, um, my mother called me and said, isn't your money in such and such a bank? And I said, yes. She said, they're going under. So I raced to the bank and pulled all my money out. Days later, she called me and said, which bank did you put that money in? <laughs> that one's going under faster. So I was racing to that bank and I was feeling just furious about banks and about this calamity that was so man-made and so unnecessary. And, and particularly about the spectacle, uh, the, the specter of hundreds of thousands of people being thrown out of work, friends of mine being laid off and downsized, a newspaper I loved going under. And it just, the whole, the whole economic landscape was so terrifying and so uh, infuriating. I thought, I'd like to find a way to write about this anger. And that got me thinking about the people at the heart of this um, crisis, bankers, and I started thinking about, well, who hates bankers almost as much as I do? And that got me thinking about bank robbers. And then I started thinking about the most famous bank robber in American history. And that got me thinking about Willie Sutton, who by pure happenstance was being quoted every day back then. Because on the financial channel, you'd see two talking heads and one would say to the other, well, why were they preying on poor people who couldn't afford to buy homes? Well, that's where the money was. And why did they invent these credit default swaps and derivatives and other exotic products that have pushed us to this abyss. Well, that's where the money was. And I just thought how funny uh, it was that the most famous quote ever from a bank robber was now being applied to bankers, except that nothing was funny back then. And so I thought maybe the time is now to write a novel about Willie Sutton. And I started reading about him and started reading about his one-man war against banks that spanned uh, four decades. And, and I thought, 
I want to write about this. It just felt uh, there was a natural um, energy that went through me. I just I thought this is the book I want to write right now.